Hello, everybody. With the United States facing a world of athletes in the Olympic Games in Rome this summer, tonight's life holds particular significance. You're watching one of the greatest athletes of our time on a day in which he broke three world records and tied another on the same day. Most of you by now, I'm sure, have recognized him, and in a moment our cameras will show you how we spring our This Is Your Life surprise tonight. This is your life in American television tradition. And now, here he is again, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. Thank you. Hello again. Now, just about an hour ago, the man whom you just saw on film came here to NBC to make what he thought was a videotape to be used in promoting the forthcoming Olympic Games to be held in Rome. The tape was actually made, and now he and the others involved are waiting in another studio to have the tape played back so they can see what happened. Let's all of us join them now because something very strange is going to happen to that tape. Watch. Yeah, we're ready. All right, roll tape. A gentleman, if you just watch right here, he'd be able to see the whole tape. I'm Bob Richards, and I've had the wonderful privilege of representing America in three Olympic Games. But I want you to meet tonight a fellow who has won four gold medals in the Olympic Games, perhaps the outstanding Olympic performer America has ever produced, Jesse Owens. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Jesse, wonderful right. to have you. Jesse Owens, two of you have been expecting me to make an appearance tonight. One of you has not. Which one? <laughs> yes, well, it's pretty obvious from the look on your face, <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> that you are the one because tonight, Jesse Owens, the boy from the Alabama cotton fields who became a great Olympic champion and hailed as the top track performer since 1900, this is your life. <laughs> Now, uh, Jesse, uh, you've been in on two of our surprises, Louis Zamperini and Ted Husing. Uh, but you weren't in on this one until right now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Sure. Our thanks to you, Bob Richards, yes, Ralph. great Olympic champion, yourself, an ex This Is Your Life subject, and we're mighty proud of you. I'm Ralph. thrilled you're showing his life, Ralph. <laughs> it's going to be great. Thanks to you, too, Bill Schroeder. Bill uh, of the Helms Foundation, for your help. All right, now come on, Jesse Owens. Let's walk right across the hall to our studio and relive with you some of the most exciting moments in sports history. And while we're on our way, here's Bob Warren. Well, here they are, ladies and gentlemen. Your This Is Your Life host, Ralph Edwards, and tonight's principal subject, Jesse Owens. And then come on over and sit down here in our chair of honor. Thanks, Bob. Oh. You've never been here before. You've been uh, behind here twice, I'm haven't you? I haven't. Well, now, as a matter of fact, Jesse, your real name is James Cleveland Owens. How did you happen to get the name Jesse? Well, Bob, that, uh, Ralph, that goes back to a long, long years ago when I first entered uh, grade school in Cleveland, Ohio. I, first time in my life I'd ever been to a mixed school, and, and uh, when I came from Alabama, being rather shy, and the lady asked me my name, and I told her, J.C., and real fast, and she says, uh, Jesse, I said, no, ma'am. She says, I said, J.C., she says, well, your name is Jesse Owens, isn't it? I says, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Jesse Owens ever since. But James Cleveland is the name your late mother and father give to their seventh child. Yes. There were four more to come, and all 13 of the Owens family lived in Dansville, Alabama. That's right. What'd your father do in Dansville, Jesse? My father was a sharecropper, and uh, we worked... Uh, the cotton fields and the cornfields of Alabama. As a youngster, Jesse, yes. you help your father plow the fields, pick the cotton crop, and whenever you're sent on an errand, you never walk, you run. You run to school, you jump over the ditches. Well, that was uh, one of the things that... I left, Ala I left Dansville and moved to Cleveland. I wrote to my father that the opportunities were better there. The voice of your oldest sister, who's come here from Cleveland, Ohio tonight, Mrs. Lily Mae Gibson. Here's Lily Mae, Jesse. Yeah. Now, let's see, Jesse was, uh, Jesse was nine years old uh, when the Owens family moved to Cleveland, wasn't he, Ms. Gibson? Yes, and Jesse was the best babysitter I ever had. 
He used to take care of Johnny, Norma, Rudy, and Helen. And though he was only nine years old, he used to hold them on his lap and tell them wonderful stories. And when little Norma grew up to be a big girl and was graduating from junior high school, uh, what did Jesse do, Miss Gibson? Jesse took his money he had earned from shoeshine job and bought her her graduation dress. Thank you, Miss Gibson. Lily May for coming here from Cleveland tonight. <laughs> At a very early age, Jesse, you know what it means to work for an education. While you're attending the Bolton Grammar School in Cleveland, you work at Tony Shoe Repair. And the thousands of pairs of shoes that you shine put you through 12 grades of school and bought your niece's graduation dress. While you're at Fairmont Junior High School, you find time to try out for track. And who was your track coach at Fairmont, Jesse? A fellow by the name of Charles Riley. One day, Mr. Riley introduces you to the late Charlie Paddock, then known as the world's fastest human. That's right. He became uh, an idol to you. Jesse, remember how I told Paddock if this lad would take track seriously, he would be in the Olympics someday. I was talking about you, Jesse. The voice of the man who was to be your real inspiration, Jesse Owens, from Sarasota, Florida, your first track coach, Charles Riley. And with him is his son, Charles. Oh, coach, how are you? Charlie, good to see you. Charlie, how are you? How are you feeling? Hi, hi. It's good to see you. Oh, God. Jesse, do you remember what Mr. Riley said to you after talking to Paddock? Well, he told me that uh, I could be like this man, but there was one thing that I had to do. It meant work and, uh, and a lot of great deal of effort. And uh, those are the things that I live by. And eight years later, Jesse, you shatter Charlie Paddock's record in the Olympic and inherit the title, World's Fastest Human. But we're ahead of our story now because uh, Mr. Riley, Mr. Riley, there were uh, uh, years of heavy training for Jesse before he was to become an Olympic champion, weren't there? Yes, I say so. I should say so, Ralph. And I was proud to be a part of some of those years. Well, now, proud along, of them. Yes. Thank you, coach. along Thank you. with his high school uh, coaches, uh, you uh, continue to work with Jesse when he went to East uh, Technical High School in Cleveland, didn't uh, you? Yes, and I saw him win the 1933 National Interscholastic Championships at the University of Chicago. Where you, Jesse, not only won the 100-yard dash in nine and four-tenths seconds, equaling the adult yeah. world's record, but the 220-yard dash in 20 and seven-tenths seconds, and the broad jump with an amazing leap of 24 feet, nine and five-eighths inches as well. No right. wonder Jesse uh, considers you his inspiration, uh, Mr. Uh, Riley. Uh, one thing more, Rob, that I am proud of, Jesse, Jesse came back from the Olympics in 1936. He went to work, and one of the first things he did was to buy me a new car. Thank, Thank you, you again, Josh. Thank you, Charles Riley of Sarasota, Florida. Thank you, Charles, for helping your father out here. And all the time you're setting these records, Jesse, you're still shining shoes after school on Saturdays and Sundays to help with the family finances. Right. Jesse sure was a busy boy. You were boys together in Alabama, went to junior high and senior high school and to Ohio State University together and were on the same Olympic team. Now teaching and track and field coach at Dunbar High School in Dayton, Ohio, Dave Albritton. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Dave, uh, you were with Jesse uh, when uh, an honor of another kind was given him, weren't you? Yes, uh, Ralph, you'd think that Jesse, with his many, many activities, would have, uh, well, just wouldn't have had the time to worry about uh, other people's problems. But knowing Jesse, he always thought of that. And, of course, uh, out of the entire student body, he was chosen president of the student council. Jesse was a uh, help to you, wasn't he, Dave? Oh, yes, very much so. While in school, you know, I was participating in many sports, football, basketball, track, and boxing. And uh, it was Jess who encouraged me to concentrate on track and field. And of course, being somewhat of a high jumper himself, very good one, he dropped out of that event so that I might be encouraged to continue. 
and of course all through his competitive days. He's helped other athletes to uh, better themselves, even some of them were his competitors. And Dave Albritton, you yourself set a world's record in the high jump while you were at Ohio State University and went on to play second in that event at the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin. You two young boys from Dansville really made it. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> now, in, uh, how you doing? Well, <laughs> I, I, I could be someplace else right now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm glad you're not, Jesse. Thank you. And in just a moment, we'll continue to trace your meteoric rise as a true champion in sports and in human relations. In 1933, Jesse, you received scholarship offers from many colleges and universities, but you enroll as a freshman at Ohio State University in Columbus. Why, Jesse? Well, because, first of all, it was closer to home. I'd heard a great deal about the coaching staff at Ohio State University, and my junior high school coach wanted me to go. Charles uh, Riley coached there, too, That's I right. think. Uh, how did you support yourself during your college years? Well, I worked, uh, I ran an elevator mm -hmm. in the state office building at night. I worked from 5 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I had an opportunity while on the elevator to study. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, to be very frank with you, I think I got better grades in my freshman year than any other time was time that I was in college. Weren't you a page boy in Ohio State? And then, yes, after that, well, then we became a page boy in the House of Representatives. House of Representatives. And when spring of 1934 rolls around, you report for track practice. That's right. And that's when I first saw you, Jesse. Another person who has meant a great deal to you, Jesse, your former track coach at Ohio State and this year head coach of the 1960 United States Olympic men's track and field team from Columbus, oh, no. Ohio, Larry Snyder. They sure did. He's taking all the boys to Rome. <laughs> oh, yes. Under your tutelage, Larry Snyder, Jesse went on to newer track triumphs. Well, mainly because of his exceptional ability and his rigorous training, he made track history one day at Ann Arbor. It was the Big Ten track meet on May 25, 1935. And on that day, Jesse set three new world records and tied another one. And yet, he went into that track meet with a back so sorely injured from a fall earlier in that week that the Ohio State boys, his teammates, had to help him put on his track uniform. And remember, Jesse, when it was time for you to go down and get on your marks at the 100-yard dash, you could hardly do it. That's right. And I was debating about pulling you out of the race, scratching your name, and you wouldn't have been able to run. But when that starter said, get set, all Jesse's pains vanished. And it was in that 100-yard dash that Jesse again tied the world record of 9 and 4 tenths seconds. Then came the broad jump, right, Larry? Yes, that broad jump that uh, day was held out in the middle of the football field. They made a special place for Jesse, a grass runway, and all the crowd, the whole attention of the crowd was right on Jesse, and he asked the broad jump official if he wouldn't put a handkerchief, a white handkerchief out there 26 feet from the board. And then... Forgetting all about this bad back and carrying it right with him, he took one leap and set a new world record. Jesse, that was a fabulous day. <laughs> a world's record of 26 feet, 8 and 1 quarter inches, which still stands after 25 years. And this is the, this is the only current world record to have stood up for that long. And following that masterful performance, Jesse, May 25th, 1935, at the Big Ten meet, you go on to set a world's record of 20 and 3 tenths seconds in the 220-yard dash and still another of 22 and 6 tenths seconds in the 220-yard uh, low hurdles, all within the space of one hour and 15 minutes. When the meet was over, how did the back feel, Jesse? They had to carry me upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> they really did, Ralph. Thank you, Larry Snyder, and good luck to you and Thank your you, U.S. Olympic yes, squad yes, in the coming games in Rome. Thank you. With your tremendous performance at Ann Arbor, you naturally go on to win a place on the United States team that is going to the Olympic Games in Berlin in 1936. The eyes of the world are on you, Jesse Owens, as you walk into the great sports arena that Adolf Hitler's had constructed in Berlin. 
The Nazi press was echoing Hitler's claims of Aryan supremacy. You were to be put to the true test of your courage and ability as you face the greatest athletes of the world. I marched with Jesse into that arena. And so did I. Two former Olympic teammates of yours, Jesse, both at that time co-holders with you of the 100-yard dash world record. From Chicago, Illinois, Ralph Metcalf, and from Los Angeles, Frank Wyckoff. I've been with this guy for two days. Boy, well, really uh, feels good. Feel good. Now, all three of you, along with Foy oh, Draper, who was killed during the war, were on the 400-meter relay team. Weren't you, Ralph Metcalf? Yes, and we were very proud to have been able to set a new world's record of 39 and 18 seconds in that event. And it was Jesse who was the leadoff man and passed the baton to me. Now next, Foy Draper, and then you, Frank Wyckoff, carried that baton over the finish line. There was a great deal of uh, tension when Jesse Owens was called for the finals of the running broad jump, wasn't there, Frank? There was indeed, Ralph. Jesse... He had, had a big a formidable, rival. He had a formidable contender there from Germany, Lutz Long, who went out and on his third try made a leap of 25 feet 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Yeah, and then came Jesse's last jump, and with a look of determination on his face, you sprinted down that runway, Jesse, leaped high in the air, and landed into the pit. And when the mark was measured, and later as it was announced over the public address system throughout that entire arena, they announced that Jesse Owens had won the running broad jump. With a leap of 26 feet, 5 eighths inches, the first 26-foot running broad jump in the history of the modern Olympic Games. And and then, Jesse, you went on and won two more gold medals, winning the 100 meters and then turning around and winning the 200 meters. A great feat. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Frank Wyckoff <laughs> and Ralph Metcalf. <laughs> On your return to the United States, Jesse, you're given a hero's welcome, and the ticker tape that floats through the air in the canyons of New York City is said to equal that accorded Charles Lindbergh. In 1937, you return to Ohio State. And shortly afterward, begin a series of appearances. With whom, Jesse? Well, I was with uh, Bill Robinson. Yes. Bojangles Robinson, and I might say that Bill was a, a great guy. Yes, he was indeed. just a tremendous guy, and. We went together throughout the country, and, and you know, I'll tell you, when he passed away, I, I lost a real friend. I, I, I want you to say, I want to know that, and, and he taught me many things in reference to the entertainment world. The fleet-footed athlete becomes a nimble dancer. You lead a swing orchestra, make a motion picture here in Hollywood, and with the money earned doing all these things, you buy your parents a new 15-room house in Cleveland. Then Jesse went into the dry cleaning business and lost everything. The voice of your childhood sweetheart, Jesse. You met her when you were in junior high school. You were married in 1931. Your wife, Ruth. Oh. <laughs> but even in the face of that uh, financial disaster, uh, you don't hold a guy like Jesse down, do you, Ruth? No, you don't. He went to work at the civilian defense program and then later joined the Illinois Athletic Commission as secretary. But in 1955, you resigned that post to do what, Jesse? I went to work for our youth commission at that time. Mm -hmm. um, we have quite a commission, and we have studied your commission out here mm -hmm. and the commission in New York. This was a goodwill uh, tour of India for the State Department. Well, first of all, I might say that first we went on the goodwill tour of, 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 uh, of the Far East. We visited India, Malaya, and yes. the Philippine Islands. Uh, Ruth, what did this entail? You've heard Jesse speak of it. Well, it entailed a training of Indian athletes, speaking at schools all over India, charming the people. Yes. And there was a commercial firm there that gave Jesse $1,000 for the use of his name, and he, in turn, turned it over to the athletic department of India to be used for worthy Indian athletes. For the past eight years, Jesse, you've been doing public relations work for Leader Cleaner in Chicago. You've reached a new pinnacle in your life now, Jesse Owens, higher perhaps than even four gold medals at the 1936 Olympics, higher even than the three world marks broken and won tied at Ann Arbor in 1935. Today, you're dealing with records that don't appear in the annals of the Olympics or the AAU. 
These are the records of boys off to a false start whom you've gotten back on the track in your capacity as sports specialist with the Illinois Youth Commission that you were talking about. Now, in just a moment, Jesse Owens, we'll meet one of the youngsters uh, whom you've helped. It's your belief, Jesse Owens, that a boy interested in sports is a boy who won't get into trouble, right? That's very true, Ralph. Recently, you established a program of sports clinics in Illinois where top-name athletes give instruction to groups of boys. And your junior sports jamboree at junior size Olympic Games has attracted each year over 1,800 youngsters. I guess that I could have been one of the juvenile delinquents that you read about in the papers if it hadn't been for Jesse Owens. The voice of a young man whom you've helped, Jesse. From Chicago, here's John Hickman. Oh, yes. How you doing? John, tell us how uh, Jesse changed your life. Well, I came from a broken home, and as a youngster, I had few opportunities to find the guidance that would mold me into a useful citizen. And I first met you, Mr. Owens, at the Southside Boys Club. That's right. Where you gave me a job and helped to build my character by teaching me good sportsmanship and fair play. But Jesse didn't stop there, did he, John? No, sir, he did not. He was uh, instrumental in securing a position for me at Contractors Furniture and Carpet Company in Chicago, where I started as a sample boy and worked myself up to a, an executive position there, uh, controlling the carpet schedule installation. And Mr. Owens, I just want you to know you've been a help to hundreds and hundreds of boys. And on behalf of all of them, I just say thanks. Thank you. This guy's making more money than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John Hickman. Right after the show, Jesse, there will be a party in your honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel where accommodations have been provided for your friends and family. Actually, your family consists of yourself and Ruth and your three daughters. Marlene, who is going to your alma mater, Ohio State. Gloria, Mrs. Malcolm Hemphill, who is teaching in Chicago. Beverly, Mrs. Donald Prather with the Southside Bank in Chicago. And your granddaughter, Donna Prather. <laughs> Pick it up and put it right on your lap over there if you want, Jesse. These gold cufflinks for you and this gold charm bracelet for Ruth are provided as mementos of this night by Marshall Jewelers of Fifth Avenue, New York. Also, we want you to have this 16-millimeter electric eye movie camera and this 16-millimeter sound projector, both furnished by uh, Bell and & Howell. And uh, we have for you, too, a film of tonight's program. Now, you have a daily early morning radio show on WAAF Chicago. And to help you record uh, some of the material that you use on this show, RCA Sales Corporation would like to provide you with this RCA portable tape recorder with speaker. And for your home, RCA Victor would like to provide you with this Cambridge Color Television with wireless wizard electronic remote control hand tuner with non-breakable impact case, all from RCA Sales Corporation. May 25th of this year will be the 25th anniversary of your record-breaking feat at Ann Arbor, Michigan, Jesse. On that day, a banquet is being held in your honor in Chicago, and an announcement will be made of the Jesse Owens Foundation, an organization which will provide college scholarships to any worthy male or female track athlete. Now, to help get the Jesse Owens Foundation off to a good start, uh, we'd like to present you with this check for $1,000. Now, Bob Richards, come on up here, pal. <laughs> now, what do you have to say about Jesse Owens here, Bob? Well, Jesse, as you have often said, if when a man achieves success, he can't reach back and lend a helping hand to someone less fortunate than he is, then all his own success is in vain. Jesse, you've reached back many times, and thanks to you, many a boy is made a better man. Thank you. This is your life, Jesse Owens. Thank you, good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Travel arrangements for guests on This Is Your Life are provided by TWA, Trans World Airlines, who fly the super jets. You fly the finest when you fly TWA. If you've devoted your life to America's future in a very special way, if Mother's Day is meant to honor sacrifices such as you've made, then the life we relive next week may be yours. We'll see you then. Good night and thank you. Good night, Jesse. This is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production produced by Axel Gruenberg and directed by Richard Gottlieb. Additional promotional funds were furnished by Transworld Airlines. Portions of this program were on videotape and film.
Be sure to see Wells Fargo Monday evenings on most of these same stations.